107.9 Light FM. Good morning. It's 8.04 along with Lisa Adams. Dr. Beth Malaski is joining me in studio from the St. Alphonsus Women's Heart Care Clinic under the broader umbrella of the St. Alphonsus Medical Group Heart Care. So I'm getting that right. God, I love it. I can get that right. So uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are Basically, it's a program called Ask a Doc. Dr. Beth is in here to answer our questions about women's heart care, men's heart care as well, too. And we have some great questions that came in from listeners. This comes in from Lacey in Boise. She says, Dr. Beth, I'm pretty tall for a woman, about five foot nine, and I'm slender. I've never really thought that I'd had to worry about heart disease because that's not been an issue in my family. I'm more concerned about breast cancer because my mom was diagnosed with it when she was 45. I'd rather put my limited insurance money toward breast cancer screenings. What is your thought, Dr. Beth? Um, I think that this is a great question because it really highlights a significant gap in our understanding and our, our uh, recognition about the risk heart disease poses to women. So you've already said heart disease is the number one killer of women in this country. And only about half of women know that. Mm -hmm. And only 16% of women think that heart disease is a risk to their health and life. So even though half of women know that heart disease is the number one killer, only 16% think it's a significant risk to their own life. And that's a huge gap in understanding. So one in three women die of heart disease and stroke compared to one in 25 dying of breast cancer. So heart disease claims twice as many lives as all forms of cancer com combined for women. So that isn't to undercut the importance of breast cancer and Definitely breast cancer not. screenings. Yes. And it doesn't need to be expensive for you to get assessed for your risk of heart disease. But the recommendations really are to get a, a cholesterol screening every five years. So she had a question about her HDL cholesterol. And she said, is it difficult to raise HDL and the average length to see increase with exercise and diet modification? It's very difficult. It's our most difficult target in lipids, actually, is raising HDL, but there are a number of things that can be helpful. So exercise is definitely helpful um, if there isn't any uh, problem with addiction or with religious reasons. A little bit of alcohol can be helpful, and women want to keep their alcohol intake at a minimum, but one or two glass one glass of wine a day mm -hmm. or a couple of days a week may be helpful in raising HDL. Increasing your ingestion of olive oil and polyunsaturated fats can be helpful. Um, and then increasing your nut intake. Um, but you have to be careful because nuts are really fattening. So you really want to stick to that one serving. And if you have high blood pressure, I tell my patients one serving of unsalted almonds, pistachios can be helpful in raising HDL. Okay.